I'm Spencer Rowan and this is The Rail. In today's bonus episode, we're going to be looking at the rise of women's football. Now earlier this year, the England Lionesses came third at the World Cup, which is actually the highest place finished from an England national team since 1966. So we'll be focusing a little bit about the potential legacy of that achievement. I've also been chatting to TV presenter Lindsay Hooper. We went to the Women's FA Cup final at Wembley and a boot launch with an England player, Enia Luko. First up, we went to Wembley Stadium, which hosted the Women's FA Cup final for the first time ever. Whilst there, we chatted to England legend Rachel Yankee and some of the players post-match. You know, to have the Women's FA Cup final here, where the same as the Men's FA Cup final, you know, it's, it's a massive step for women's football. You know, these days breaking history and, uh, you know, hopefully it will continue into the future that every cup final will be here. And it shows the progression and obviously we need to, you know, get more youngsters involved and, and knowing about women's football, knowing about the players and, uh, you know, business is involved so we can have more games like today. It's inspiring for the girls really, I think seeing uh, girls or women's football playing is fantastic, uh, all these girls love to watch it um, and it, it gets them involved and want to play, it's a fantastic stadium, fantastic atmosphere so um, it's about time that they got the kudos they deserve really. Every game of the World Cup was, was shown live on BBC and uh, that's something that's never been done before, I don't think many people would have thought before that that we'd be you know, the third best team in the world. And it's now developing a whole new fan base, I think, both from a male and female perspective. And it's a great time to be involved with women's football, um, from both a, a child's perspective, uh, a, a coach's perspective and a parent's perspective. So um, I think it's probably the best it has been and it can only get better. There's been good steps made, but um, there still needs to be more. Obviously today they're looking at a biggest crowd of like 25, 30,000, but that doesn't repeat itself in, in our sort of league matches. If you're a girl, if you're a boy, whoever you are, you can go out there and play football and hopefully at the end of the day you can, uh, you can make a career out of it. Any manager standing here at Wembley to be a part of a winning team in the first occasion is it's a historic moment. I'm incredibly proud. You know, we've made history for Chelsea women. The first trophy, first piece of silver win, hopefully the first of many. I've been at the club for nine years and we haven't won anything, so I mean, it's a stepping stone in the right direction for the club. It felt like the timing was right for us to win something, and we did. I'm happy with that. It's been a special moment. To be here at Wembley, the home of English football, has been a fantastic moment. I think it gives you butterflies in your stomach. I think coming here today and seeing that stadium and the amount of people that actually came to support us was really, really special. Now the important message is let's be all done it. You know, a lot of good work done at the World Cup, obviously with the Cup final, and now I think collectively we've got to continue to put in the hard work. Everyone bought into the World Cup team and you know, people love the heart of the Lionesses, and, and that is now kind of filtered down to the WSL. We've seen the crowds go up, obviously not just here, but in league games as well. Coming towards league games has been unbelievable, the support we've Got. And I think, yeah, coming off the back of the World Cup, I think we wanted to see that and it's good to see that. Great to see Wembley and the FA recognising the women's game by hosting the Women's FA Cup final at Wembley. Next up, I'm talking to TV presenter Lindsay Hooper about all things women's football. So, women's football, let's start off with World Cup in Canada. You were there. How was it all? It was fantastic, great atmosphere. It was one of those as well, when you were out there, you felt the momentum building as the tournament went on, as England did better and better. So it was great to see that. I think it's just on the up now. Lots of people coming through the gates in yeah. games in WSL and things. Well, that, that's the key thing next now, is, is building on that, you mm. know, creating a legacy. Well, the next job, I guess, is sustaining that. I think it's sustaining it, but it's also increasing it still. There's right. still growth. To be, to be had. I think because England came third at the World Cup, they were the top European performing side. So yeah. expectations now are high for the Euros. 
in Amsterdam. If we can carry on and England can continue doing well, we'll see over the next five years perhaps the biggest uptake in women's football in this country that we've ever seen. What for you though are the main, the main challenges in, in, in that happening? As soon as the Premier League's back up and running and it's in full flow, you're up against that, yeah. you're up against um, lower league football. Hereford United recently got something like 4,000 people through a gate. From the players' perspective, contractually, mm. becoming more professional in that, in that way, having more players treating it as a, as a proper profession as opposed to semi-professional kind yeah. of outlook. How important is that to emulate what we've seen in the US from the women's game? It's the biggest draw because if you can get players who are talented at the, the young enough age to go, I'm going to pursue this properly for a career, rather than thinking about having to juggle a day job alongside yeah. training in the evenings. Well, we've got a model in place now with the WSL since the FA introduced this five-year game changer and we've got semi-pro and professional football setups. Yeah. Your likes of Notts Counties, your likes of Chelsea ladies, Manchester City being the, the real front runner in it. Hopefully pressure will be mounted on teams like Manchester United who have a really great girls academy but then don't have a mm. senior team. The game changer campaign, mm. just how important was that and what exactly did it entail? It was over a five year plan and it was to introduce the WSL 1 and 2 so we, what we saw for the very first time was relegation and promotion and I think mm. that's done wonders for the sport and if you're possibly going to get promoted to the top tier of women's football which the likes of Reading and Yeovil have been fighting and Doncaster Bells in WSL 2 this season then suddenly their interest factor goes up a whole new level and they committed a lot of finances but a lot of coverage um, they, they've been very uh, proactive in terms of getting more media outlets you know I know that the FA are behind one of the shows that I actually front on BT Sport in terms of Wembley you know the fact that Wembley was the host for the FA Cup yep, yep. Um, all these little moments that have happened over the last five years have, have been huge in terms of the game and where it goes from here. Who do you think are the key people for, for, for England team moving forward you know like in the States we've seen the likes of Alex Morgan and, and, and Hope Solo. I think now we've got this whole new generation coming Coming through. I think Lucy Bronze is going to be here for a very long time. I think Claire Rafferty is going to be around for a long time to come as well. Alex Greenwood, who's very young, she was the youngest player in the England squad this summer. Her future is extremely bright. If you were to make a five or ten year plan for, for women's football, where would you want to see it? I would love to see people who support a football team being able to support the female team. Definitely. So I'm a Wolverhampton Wanderers fan, so I would love to think that Wolverhampton Wanderers ladies have got a team that are doing well enough that I can follow them as well. If Manchester United get a women's team and actually put the resources into it, something that could maybe rival what Manchester City have done. But it makes sense as Man City are doing well that they yeah. should be annoyed and they should want to get involved because yeah. it's a noisy neighbours. And they've got it? they have their own stadium, don't they? Which, yeah, yeah. which if on a really big local derby they got ten thousand in that stadium, then that stadium will be rocking and that's yeah. the sort of atmosphere that you want. You do need those wonder goal moments, those moments, the Lucy Bronze moment at the World Cup, you need the yeah. Stephanie Roach goal that was nominated for yeah, FIFA goals, yeah. goal of the year. Because those moments are going to keep it in the spotlight and, and keep showing that it is worthy and people who maybe have a preconception of what women's football is get challenged on it. I think a lot of people tuned in to the World Cup and thought, actually this is better than I thought. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. It's Thank fascinating you. to hear about Thanks women's football. Finally today, we spoke to England striker Ennio Luco at an Umbro boot launch. We spoke about her professional footballer brother, we spoke about her role models growing up, and a little bit more about the WSL. Tony is, um, you know, a very good friend of mine. You know, he's my brother, but you know, he's a great advisor and. You know, it's very important for me to have someone in the game who, you know, plays in pressure games every week and he understands the psychological um, pressure as well that comes with that. I really looked up to Eric Cantona. You know, I used to pop my collars when I was playing when I was younger and think I was him. Um, I just thought he was an art form, really. In terms of women, it was actually quite difficult to have any role models because women's football wasn't on TV a lot. For me, Ham was kind of the name that, you know, every young girl you know, wanted to be and I'd actually never seen her play, I just wanted to be Mia Hamm because everyone else did. I played in America for three years and at the time it was the best league in the world and there was a lot of money thrown into the league but it, it sort of collapsed pretty quickly. The difference in England is, is that it's been a slow build um, in terms of popularity and now we're looking at a very competitive FAWSL league. So I think the way that we've done it here in England, you know, over a sort of 10 year span, it's, it's, it's a lot more sustainable and. Hopefully young girls coming through will be able to say 
look at you know women's professional football as a, as a career path. For me as a women's football fan, it's great to see the game just growing all over the world at full stop. Law was, was very much a profession that I put a lot of um, energy into, but now it's slightly different. You know, anyone coming through the youth ranks for, at clubs can say, I want to be a professional footballer at Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, and feel secure in that. So I think it's a really good place to be for women's football. That's it from us. Hopefully you've enjoyed this bonus episode of The Rail focusing on the women's game. If you have, please drop a like on the video, subscribe to Copper Knightley to see future episodes of The Rail first, and I'll see you soon.